O Hecate de Era, the Knowing One, holder of deep mysteries, grant me your wisdom beyond the veil. Illuminate my path with your insight. Guide me through the shadows of uncertainty and teach me the secrets that lie within my soul. Hecate Angelos, divine messenger between worlds, carry me the message of the gods. Help me hear the whispers of the unseen. Show me the signs and symbols I must follow and let your voice be a beacon of clarity and truth. Hecate Pantaros, all nurturing goddess, wrap me in your comforting arms. Provide me with the strength to heal and grow. Nurture my spirit as I walk this path and offer your love to those who of need of solace. Hell Hecate, goddess of wisdom and insight and compassion. In your knowledge, I trust. In your care, I find peace. In your presence, I am nurtured and whole. Hi, welcome to Cup on Cards. My name is Renee Olson. Um, we are talking today about uh, Hecate, Insights from the Epitaphs. This is part four of our series. Um, and today we're gonna be focusing on wisdom and insight. Um, it is November 1st. Um, we are having a presidential election next week here in the US. So yeah, I'm on pins and needles about that. Um, but today our focus is going to be on um, three new epitaphs from the Crossroads Oracle. So grab your tea, sit down, come and hang out for, with me for a little bit, and we're gonna um, share a little bit of knowledge today. I'm having some green tea today. Green tea is very good for you. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, Dr. Greger, um, that is a, his website is nutritionfacts.org. There are some wonderful articles on there about how great green tea is for you. And I highly recommend it. So we are going to get started. So let's start by just going over what we discussed last time. Um, last time we talked about Hecate, or for the past three episodes, we're actually, we talked about Hecate as a light bearer. We talked about her as a guardian of the underworld, and we talked about her as a protective force. Um, and today we're gonna look at her as um, wisdom and insight. So we're gonna choose uh, three new epithets from the Crossroads Oracle, and we're gonna talk about those in that light. So the words that we are going to look at, or the epithets we're gonna look at today, are Hecate de Era, which is this one, and Hecate Angelos, which is this one. And then we're gonna talk about Hecate Pantrophus. All right, so through these epitaphs, we're gonna be able to see Hecate's role as a guide to mystical knowledge, a bearer of divine messages, and a nurturing force who cares for those and gives wisdom to those in need. Um, we're gonna start with De Era. Okay. De Era is the De Era. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, De Era is the knowing one. Now, when we think about the knowing one, this epitaph emphasizes Hecate's role as a source of mystical knowledge and wisdom. As De Era, she holds the secrets of the universe, the mysteries of life and death, and the, the keys to deeper spiritual understanding. Um, in some ancient texts, she was also associated with esoteric knowledge, especially in the context of magic and mysteries. So when we think about that, we're going to think about, you know, the Chaldean oracles. That would be one way that she may have been looked at as um, the keeper of knowledge. Uh, other books that you may want to consider um, are, is this one, obviously, from The Circle for Hecate, from Sarita de Este. And then um, this book is amazing. It is uh, Hecate Soltera. Um, and it is a wonderful book to include in your library related to the goddess. So when we're looking at these books and when we're thinking about calling upon this epitaph, what we're looking for is that magical knowledge, right? So it may not necessarily be um, where you're looking for uh, a religious aspect, 
right? We're not really talking about, or to me, we're not really talking about a religious aspect here. What we're referring to when we're calling upon this deity is we're looking for insight, and that's going to be intuition, right? That's going to be magic. It's going to be, you know, your, your scrying uh, opportunities. It's going to be pendulum work. It's going to be working with the goddess in such a way that allows her to bring you knowledge of the mystical realm. Now, some ways that you may want to work with her is you can you could invoke her whenever you're seeking guidance, right? So especially in the area of spiritual growth. So let's say that you are looking for a way to, you know, maybe create a new ritual, right? Or maybe you were looking at, you know, becoming a torchbearer for the Covenant Hecate. Um, if you wanted to become a torchbearer, there's a massive amount of reading. I mean, the, this these books and and they're they're required reading but this is very this is a very small set of them um i have the other books out in the other room on the bookshelf um i have these in here as i'm prepping for a torchbearer class this weekend um but what we there's a massive amount of reading and you may want to call upon her to help with that wisdom that guidance that information that you need from that mystical side um, another way to look at this too is going to be the mentions here invoking her right so if we're invoking we're in ritual we've cast a circle we've um, we've called the quarters we've welcomed the guardians whatever you do to create your sacred space um, we've done that and now we're calling the goddess we're invoking her to come into us we're asking her to bring her wisdom, her energy, her knowledge into us, giving us that esoteric or that uh, magical knowledge that we need to cast the magical spells that we want to cast. Um, some ways that you could get her um, in to get in touch with her is meditate or journal work. Um, you could also use the divination tools I mentioned, like perhaps the scrying options. Um, you could also use, you know, the pendulum board. You know, those are different ways that you could connect with her. Now, the key words for this card, and I'm going to just hold that up for you one more time. The key words for this card are wisdom, insight, and fertility. So there is a fertility aspect to her as well. Um, so if you were looking at maybe um, doing some work with someone who is pregnant or is expecting or wants to become pregnant, this might be a good deity to call on as well. So that is Hecate Deera. And now we are going to talk about Hecate Angelos. So there's Hecate Angelos. And her key words are communication, messages, and guidance. So Angelos, as we are all familiar, and you can tell by the card, right, it's related to angels. Um, and angels are generally divine messengers, right? They are the ones that bring us information. Um, and in this role, Hecate serves as a bridge between the human and divine worlds, delivering messages and guidance from the gods. So, you know, if you're in a situation that, if you're in a situation where you want to say you want to call upon you, know, you need Hermes help with something or you need you know whatever Pathion you happen to use whether it be Hermes or, or, or uh, Poseidon or whatever group of gods you happen to call your own um, you would use Hecate as a messenger goddess she would be the one who was like I got you tell me what you need I got you I'm gonna go and I'm gonna deliver your message for you um, she is the one who helps us receive that spiritual insight and direction when we're at we're the crossroads, um, but metaphorically, and when we're in need of guidance. So when we're talking about her, we're talking about communication, messages. Those are the times that we're going to need that little bit of extra oomph, right? And that's what she does. Um, some ways that you could work with her. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Hecate's role as a messenger, it emphasizes her ability to facilitate communication between realms, right? So it's getting that message from um, one side to another. And this may come as dreams or omens or even direct spiritual in, uh, experiences. Um, I've had several conversations where like, oh, Hecate spoke to me. Um, I've, I've, as I mentioned last time, um, when I was studying to become a torchbearer, I had a massive amount of reading to do. And I'm dyslexic, 
So um, it, was, it was very difficult for me. And I was walking out into where my threshold altar is. And I was saying aloud to my partner, I was like, I don't think I can do this. I mean, how am I gonna get it done? Maybe I should just quit. Why am I doing this? And as I looked over to the altar, a black rat snake came in, circled the base of the altar, and then slithered right out. Um, and to me, that was that message that, that helped me understand that I did need to keep going. This was exactly where I needed to be. Um, so that's where those uh, a direct spiritual experience may be. Um, she can help us understand signs and messages that we receive from the universe. Sometimes they might come directly from her. Maybe it's from some other force, um, depending on how your particular um, deity structure is laid out. Um, some ways to work with her is you can call on her when you're seeking divine guidance or trying to interpret a message from your spiritual practice. Let's say that you've worked with the pendulum board and you've gotten a, a particular message and you're just not sure about it. You just don't know how it should be interpreted. Um, working with Angelos is a great way to try and figure that out. Um, you want to pay attention to signs and symbols and synchronicities that may appear in your life. And even consider keeping a, a dream journal or a record of, of what's going on. That's always a good idea. Um, if you are someone who um, does dream interpretations, I know a lot may, you know, work with mugwort so that you can kind of have a little more lucid dreams and that sort of thing. I'm by no means recommending that. Please consult your physician before doing anything that I say. Um, but uh, some do use that and when you wake, there's only a certain time period where that dream will disappear. So you always want to sit up immediately and write your dreams down. So dream journals are great. So one more time, this is Hecate Angelos, the divine messenger. And her key words, again, are communication, messages, and guidance. So now we are going to move on to our next choice from the, uh, from the Crossroads Oracle. This is Hecate Pantrophus, and this is the all-nurturing. You can see I have her sitting here. Her heart light is, is shining brightly, and she's holding a, a dog. So Hecate Pantrophus um, this epitaph re reflects Hecate's nurturing or motherly aspect, um, where she provides care and compassion for those in need. Um, as Pantrovius, Hecate is a provider of spiritual nourishment, um, offering protection and comfort and strength to her followers. So for me, um, this deity might be something someone would call on when they're, you know, participating in the LGBT march. Maybe they're wearing one of those shirts that says, I'm your mother now. Right? Or um, there's someone who is looking for a way to provide that extra bit of support to someone else. Um, you could look at it in both directions. You know, do you need mothering or do you need to give mothering? What is that, that energy that you're trying to pull in? And then you will be able to, uh, to pull in that compassion, that gentleness, and that nurturing that she represents. Hecate is particularly powerful in times of emotional distress when we're feeling lost or overwhelmed. Um, so let's say that, you know, a presidential election is coming up and you're very concerned um, for your physical well-being um, related to the outcome. Um, maybe you are worried about um, a friend who's in the hospital. Um, maybe you are concerned about an upcoming job interview. Um, any of these places where you might find that emotional distress, where you're feeling lost or overwhelmed, you would call upon this epitaph. Hecate is a nurturing God. Pantrophus is a nurturing God offering support and strength when we need it most. Some ways that you may work with her. Um, you may work with her when you're in need of, uh, of emotional healing as well. Um, so not only in the times of comfort or emotional distress, but maybe when you need healing, when you need to, you know, self-care is extremely important. You need to take time. You need to have a spot where you can relax. You have all of your things. You need to practice your, you know, your, your nurturing behaviors, your self-love and your self-care behaviors. Um, so she is a great one to call on for that. You can also work with her when you're caring for others who are in need of support. Um, I do a lot of uh, sound healing. So I create videos, I have sessions where I will 
play my bowls um, to provide a, uh, a healing or alignment of chakras. Um, so this would be a great deity, right? Maybe I want to set her card just like this up on the, the table while we're doing our ritual, um, while I'm playing our music and bring that healing energy into the circle. So today we talked about our three, our three epitaphs. I'm gonna just hold these up. Um, we talked about wisdom and guidance, or wisdom and nurture is from Deira. We talked about knowledge and, and mystical knowledge is from Angelos, the divine messenger. And we talked about um, Pantrophus, the all nurturing mother. Hecate's wisdom can guide us in times of uncertainty and her nurturing energy offer us solace when we need it most. She helps us navigate a spiritual path with clarity and insight. So as you're going through this week, take some time to reflect on how to bring um, Hecate's wisdom and nurturing energy back into your life. Um, whether it's through seeking her guidance in a meditation, maybe interpreting some signs or messages through some of the divination options, or just embracing her nurturing presence in time of need. Um, Hecate is always there to provide us with wisdom and care. Um, you could consider creating a sacred space um, and maybe invoking her um, in rituals that are related to clarity, guidance, and emotional healing. So I'm gonna hold these up for you one more time. We have Deira, Deira, and then we have Angelos, and then we have Pentros. So those are our those are our cards for today. Next week we will be working on November eighth. We're going to talk about Hecate as a guardian and transformation. I have three more cards for you at that time. Um, if you're interested in this deck, um, as I mentioned, this is available on my website. Here are a few of the other cards. Uh, I'll just hold those up for you. Um, it is at hecatebremo.org, and everything that I sell on the website goes to support the Sanctuary of Hecate Bremo. Um, it is an official sanctuary of the Covenant of Hecate. It is a membership center as well. Um, and if you are interested in becoming a member, you can find that information on hecatebremo.org. Um, you can also find it on um, hecatecovenant.com. Uh, Covenant, um, as I mentioned, I'll be having another Torchbearer class that's going to be kicking off this week. If you are a member of the Covenant of Hecate and you have been for at least the past six months, you're welcome to join. Just reach out to me directly via email and I will be happy to um, enroll you. I have one more spot available, um, so please reach out quickly if you'd like to join. That is going to be our, uh, our delivery for today. Um, again, we'll be circling back on November 8th. Um, I hope you have a glorious day today and a wonderful weekend. I'll speak with you soon.